Hello and welcome to what is hopefully the first of many audio let's plays of classic text adventures, specifically Infocom text adventures we're going to start out with. We're going to go in chronological order, starting with the classic Zork. West of House. You are standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. We're going to go north, however. North of house. You are facing the north side of a white house. There is no door here, and all the windows are boarded up. To the north, a narrow path winds through the trees. We're going to go north again. Forest path. This is a path winding through a dimly lit forest. The path heads north-south here. One particularly large tree with some low branches stands at the edge of the path. We're going to go up, up the tree. You're about ten feet above the ground, nestled among some large branches. The nearest branch above you is above your reach. Beside you on the branch is a small bird's nest. In the bird's nest is a large egg, encrusted with precious jewels, apparently scavenged somewhere by a childless songbird. The egg is covered with fine gold inlay and ornamented in lapis lazuli and mother of pearl. Unlike most eggs, this one is hinged and has a delicate-looking clasp holding it closed. The egg appears extremely fragile. We are going to get egg. We've gotten the egg. We're going to go down, south, and east. And now we are behind the house. A path leads into the forest to the east. In one corner of the house, there is a small window, which is slightly ajar. We are going to open the window. And with great effort, you open the window far enough to allow entry. We're going to go west, into the kitchen. You are in the kitchen of the White House. A table seems to have been used recently for the preparation of food. A passage leads to the west, and a dark staircase can be seen leading upward. A dark chimney leads down, and to the east is a small window, which is open. On the table is an elongated brown sack, smelling of hot peppers. A bottle is sitting on the table, and the glass bottle contains a quantity of water. We're going to open the sack. A lunch and a clove of garlic are found. Take garlic. The lunch is not going to be important. We're going to go west. You are in the living room. There is a door to the east, a wooden door with strange gothic lettering to the west, which appears to be nailed shut, a trophy case, and a large oriental rug in the center of the room. Above the trophy case hangs an elvish sword of great antiquity. A battery-powered brass lantern is on the trophy case. We're going to open that case. We've opened it. We're getting all. Get all. That just means you get everything in the room. Trophy case. Secured fast into the wall. We've taken the sword. Wooden door. Not bloody likely. <laughs> Lamp taken. Carpet. Not carried. So. Move rug. With great effort, the rug is moved to one side of the room. The dusty cover of a closed trap door appears. Why would it be dusty if there was a rug over it? That's the real question. Now we can get moving. Open trap door. Door reluctantly opens to reveal a rickety staircase descending into darkness. Now we're going down. The trap door crashes shut, and you hear someone barring it. It is pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by a Gru, and your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. Let us light our lantern. The lamp is now on. Cellar. You are in a dark and damp cellar with a narrow passageway leading north and a crawlway to the south. On the west is a bottom of a steep metal ramp which is unclimbable. So, we've turned on our lantern, and now we're going to get going. Let's go to the south. East of Chasm. You are on the east edge of a chasm, the bottom of which cannot be seen. The west side is sheer rock, providing no exits. A narrow passageway goes north and the path you are on continues to the east. Your sword is no longer glowing. Good sign. 
we're going to go to the east. Gallery. This is an art gallery. Most of the paintings which were here have been stolen by vandals with exceptional taste. The vandals left through either the north or west exits. Fortunately, there is still one chance for you to be a vandal, for on the far wall is a painting of unparalleled beauty. So, of course, we're going to get the painting. Get painting. Taken. The chimney leads to the kitchen, but we can only go up with a very light load. Uh, so we're going to go to the west. We're now east of the chasm. Chasm, excuse me. Now we're going to go north. We're going to go north to the troll room. This is a small room with passages to the east and south, and a forbidding hole looking west. Bloodstains and deep scratches, perhaps made by an axe, mar the walls. A nasty-looking troll, brandishing a bloody axe, blocks all passages out of the room. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. Attack, troll with sword. What else are we to do? The troll is battered into unconsciousness. Wonderful. We're going to continue doing this, attacking troll with sword, until he's dead. The unconscious troll cannot defend himself. He dies. Well, that was easy. Almost as soon as the troll breathes his last breath, a cloud of sinister black fog envelops him, and when the fog lifts, the carcass has disappeared. Your sword is no longer glowing. So, next, we're going to drop the sword. Apparently, we don't need it anymore. Plus, it has a bunch of blood all over it. Not quite fun. Next, let's go to the west. This is part of a maze with twisty little passages all alike. Well, my friends, we've been here before, haven't we? I think we've all been here before, once or twice. So, let's go south. Now let's go east. And finally, we need to go up. A skeleton, pr probably the remains of a luckless adventurer, lies here. Beside the skeleton is a rusty knife. The deceased adventurer's useless lantern is here. There's a skeleton key here. An old leather bag bulging with coins is here. And someone carrying a large bag is casually leaning up against one of the walls. He does not speak, but it is clear from his aspect that the bag will be taken over his dead body. Get coins. Next we want to... Next we're going to go southwest. East. South. And then southeast. Okay, now we're going to go southwest. And, of course, we're going to go east this time. That was where I messed up last. South. And southeast. We're out. Here's the Cyclops room. This room has an exit to the northwest and a staircase leading up. A Cyclops, who looks prepared to eat horses, much less mere adventurers, blocks the staircase. From his state of health and the blood stains on the walls, you gather that he is not very friendly, though he likes people. <laughs> uh, that's a good way. Ulysses, say Ulysses. Why in the world would we do that? But so the guide says. The Cyclops, hearing the name of his father's dead nemesis, flees the room by knocking down the wall on the east of the room. We're going to go east. Strange passage. This is a long passage. To the west is one entrance. On the east there is an old wooden door with a large hole in it, about cy cyclops sized. We're going east again. Oh, we're back in the living room. Okay, put treasures in case. I, I don't think we have any. So let's go east. Back into the kitchen. Here we are, best into the kitchen. Now we're going to go up into the attic. This is the attic. The only exit is a stairway leading down. On a table is a nasty looking knife. A large coil of rope is lying in the corner. Get all. Table, a valiant attempt. Nasty knife and rope are taken. So next, we're going to go down. West, west, west. Back in the Cyclops room. Take a deep breath, everybody. In and out, and go up. You hear a scream of anguish as you violate the robber's hideaway. 
Using passages unknown to you, he rushes to its defense. The thief gestures mysteriously, and the treasures in the room suddenly vanish. Treasure room. This is a large room whose east wall is solid granite. A number of discarded bags which crumble at your touch are scattered about on the floor. There is an exit down a staircase. There is a suspicious-looking individual holding a bag leaning in against one wall. He is armed with a vicious-looking stiletto. <laughs> there is a silver chalice intricately engraved here. You parry a lightning thrust, and the thief salutes you with a grim nod. What we're going to do is attack the thief with a knife. Good thing we got that knife earlier. The thief draws blood, raking his stiletto across your arms, and dodges our stroke. Let's go again. Attack thief with knife. Okay, we've almost gotten him. Attack thief with knife. The thief slowly approaches, strikes like a snake, and leaves you wounded. We're almost dead, people. Attack thief once more with knife. We have died. All right. Let us continue attacking the thief with the knife. Hmm. Let's try it again. Attack thief with knife. We're going to be here for a while, guys. Ooh. The butt of his stiletto cracks you on the skull and you stagger back. So, guess what we're going to do? Attack thief with knife. We're going to attack thief with knife. I'll pause for a minute and be back when I finish this. Okay, everybody, we are back. I had to really reload about four times. The unconscious thief cannot defend himself. He dies. Almost as soon as the thief breathes his last breath, a cloud of sinister black fog envelops him, and the carcass has disappeared. As the thief dies, the power of his magic decreases, and his treasures reappear. A stiletto and a chalice. We're going to take all. We're going to drop our knife. Now we're going to drop knife. We're going to go down, east and east again to get to the living room. Turn off our lantern. Put all treasures in the case. Chalice, bag of coins, painting, and jewel-encrusted egg are all put in the case. Well, everybody, that's going to finish us up for the first episode. So, see you on the next one for another episode of Zork 1.